Right, there's some great looking things in this video. One is that backdrop, two, well, it's arguably me, and the third one is these irons that I've got in my hand, or these wedges, rather. I think a lot of average golfers are gonna love these things. They're new from Ping, it's the Glide 4. Let's go and see how they get on out on the course at Palero here in Madeira. The first thing to talk about with these wedges is just how good they look. New design in terms of these uh, Glide 4s. Ping have done a real good job of being able to streamline these things into the I-59s even possibly, and certainly the 525s, and that's something I really like. This idea of going into your existing set of irons and blending them seamlessly into your wedge set, and these Glide 4 have got the same finish, that Hydra Pearl finish, and they look very consistent with both those sets of irons. That's a real thumbs up from me, and that Hydra Pearl finish is suggested it performs really well in dry and wet conditions. I cannot prove that theory right or wrong. I'm happy to believe it. Right, so the things I like about these wedges, let's start off with the fact that I have chosen to play both the 54 and the 58 in this wide sole option, which I think is a, well, it's a real help. The bounce is a real uh, sort of help for most average golfers. And I think that for me, what's been clever about these uh, glide wedges is that they've got the thick wide sole but they've still got plenty of shaping and chamfering off to allow plenty of versatility for your canner to play a number of different shots with each of the clubs. I'm going to class these as game improvement irons with plenty of workability, flexibility for players who've got the confidence and want to do a little bit more with their wedges. Right, okay, the next part of this review comes from a different golf course, Santa de Serra. We're still on Madeira, but I played lots of shots with the wedges in and around Palero yesterday, which you're seeing now. And I've got uh, more than an opinion on whether or not I think these wedges are any good or not. But unfortunately, by the time I start doing recording, the weather changed a little bit. So we've moved into Santa de Serra the following day. Plenty of shots hit here. So I feel like I've got a good sort of, uh, well, I've put it in plenty of positions. We've tried each of the lofts and I've got a fair old opinion that I'm about to share with you. And I think these wedges, as I said in the intro, are really appealing to most average golfers. Now wedge reviews are boring. There's not a great deal I can do and make these exciting apart from looking at me execute shots with them. And like I said, that's pretty boring, I know. So what is so good of it? Let's keep it very, very brief. The wedge market is a real interesting one. I've done videos in recent weeks where you either buy a speciality wedge, you buy or you buy a continuation of your iron set into the wedges. Then there's a couple of wedges in between all that, which I would class as game improvement wedges. That's a bit insulting in some ways to these wedges and the others that I'd put in there. But let's look at sort of CBX wedges from Cleveland. Um, then we've got, what's the other wedge? ES21s from Mizuno. They're the kind of wedges I would class as game improvement wedges. And I'd possibly put the Glide 4 in there. And don't be insulted if you think otherwise. But the reason I say that is because they're forgiving. And I've done lots of videos about where, where I say, why go in from sort of game improvement plays, distance signs, whatever we're gonna call it, and then go into blade like wedges because they're the opposite of what you have in the bag. And that's where I think these are so good in that they've built a wedge that is forgiving, but it doesn't look bulky. It doesn't look as though it's got a lot of mass on it. They're very much a slimmed down version, but without doubt there is an aim there to make them forgiving at the same time and very playable. I already said I love the wide soles. Gives you a lot of versatility, a lot of golfers out there that well, when I say a lot of versatility there are a lot of versatility in terms of what ping is offering in terms of bounce options and sole options which I think is fantastic but for me that wide sole 14 degrees of bounce is a big help for me it stops me from chunking stuff and it's been a real positive on a personal level and that's where I think they help out average golfers and as I say the final point because we're going to keep this brief we can't go on about this any longer it's just about their looks they blend into their current iron sets really really well and by the same token, if you've got a set of Mizuno blades or whatever it is, Mizuno irons, if you've got a set of ping irons, these are going to look really, really good in the bag alongside them. So all in all, right now, ping have just brought out i525s, the four wedges and the i59s. And apart from the price tag, they all get huge thumbs up from me. All I'm interested in is what your thoughts. Tell me how they look. Tell me what you think of uh, the performance you've seen of them in my hands and are they a consideration for you in this uh, coming months? Right, as ever, thanks for watching. We've been at Santa de Serra, this one in Madeira. Thanks for having us. Thanks for letting us use this backdrop. It's been pretty nice. Right, see you all soon.